Hey and welcome! I'm Hanny, something a bit different for the channel today, it's a pilot for a new series. For you Overwatch fans do give this a go and I've Overwatch lore videos coming up in the next few days, never you fear. Over the last year I've asked you all several times if and what you'd like my channel and my videos to expand to beyond Overwatch lore and Overwatch in general. Other Blizzard game lore, other video game lore and story and things I enjoy. Opinions and impressions on other games were the top things you voted for and all of those will be coming as trials to see what you think on this channel in the coming weeks. Don't worry, all your favourite lore interactions, voice lines and more will still be here. Please do give the new stuff a go and let me know what you think in the comments. With that in mind, welcome to Unwrapped, where I give my early thoughts and impressions on games I've either just started playing, games that are in early access, or games that are in an alpha or beta phase of testing. In Unwrapped videos, I'll do a little bit about the history of the game or studio making it, my history with the game or genre itself, then playing the game itself with what I think sprinkled in of what I've played so far. If I continue to play the game, I'll come back and review it either when it's out or when I've got to the end of it too, so there'll always be a follow-up part if it's a game I enjoy. Now, as the Star Wars Battlefront 2 beta has just released, I'm a big fan of Star Wars and I've played loads of the games, it feels like a great place for me to try this. So, here we go, time codes to skip in the description below to different sections. So what is Star Wars Battlefront? Well, originally a fantastic series of Star Wars first and third person shooter and action games in the mid-2000s, Battlefront has always styled itself as a franchise and series as the ultimate Star Wars battle experience. It's had a recent reboot in the past couple of years under the auspices of EA from DICE, the makers of Battlefield, yay to the old games, Mirror's Edge, hopefully that game actually realises its potential one day, perhaps the third time might be the charm, and of course the reboot of Battlefront from a couple of years ago, but more on that last game in a second. In Battlefront you fly, drive, shoot, swing, sabre and force choke or otherwise your way through classic battles from the Star Wars sagas. So why did I not actually play the latest EA and DICE Battlefront? Well it looked absolutely beautiful, but after reports of it being slightly repetitive in terms of a lack of content, no real single player campaign which I could forgive, but apparently lacking in multiplayer levels which many people struggled with, I stayed away from buying it. So I'm fresh into what apparently seems to be a step forward from the learnings of the first one by EA and DICE. Now it's worth mentioning before we delve into the multiplayer beta and my thoughts that there will be a single player story mode in the full game. You'll forge a path that's Iden Versio, Commander of Inferno Squad, an Imperial Special Forces unit. It's set between the end of Return of the Jedi and the beginning of The Force Awakens, and during this story you'll encounter many of Star Wars great characters over a 30 year span. With that in mind, let's jump into the beta, which is multiplayer, and of course multiplayer, as well as DICE's heritage, is at the throbbing heart of what Battlefront means, and Star Wars means to so many people. First things first, Galactic Assault Mode. Now this is the crown jewel of Battlefront. It's a 20 versus 20 mode, and in the beta you'll be defending Naboo as a clone trooper, or joining the ranks of the Separatists, or Trade Federation if you remember them from the prequel films, although some people would rather forget those of course, and storm the Royal Palace of Feed. Fighting as one of four distinct trooper or ground unit forces to start with, you can then proceed to call in reinforcements, pilot vehicles, and use the battle points that you accumulate from fighting to perhaps even become a hero, an iconic character of the Star Wars universe. Han Solo and Rey are available for the clone forces, and Boba Fett and Darth Maul are available for the Separatists. So I put in a good 10 hours or so so far, and here are my initial thoughts on this mode. Now, whatever your thoughts on the prequel films, this level and this mode is a heck of a lot of fun. After a bit of betting in time, like any game with sizeable teams and a large map size, you're going to get flanked a lot and killed a little bit from random places until you get the lay of the land. I was sniping at range, flanking people, and running around trying to group up with people a whole bunch. You quickly get a sense of different team compositions or class picks suiting different areas of the map. The big open starting area for example is a haven for specialists who have long range rifles akin to a sniper. Some battle point perks I have to say did feel better than others. You generally can't go too wrong with upgraded infantry, things like using the super battle droids. However, the fighters and gunship on Naboo, or the things that let you take to the air above the level, felt harder to use given the small space available comparatively to fly in, and the numerous places for infantry to hide. I found myself in one ship, flying a few laps and seeing nothing to shoot. This might well be my unfamiliarity in skill level, rather than the actual game. As you Overwatch fans know, my aim is average at best but I'm sure these could be very dangerous in the right hands. While we're in the crown jewel mode, it seems a good time to have a think about the sights and sounds, the visuals and the audio of this game. Now this game looks absolutely beautiful. On PC, I'm running it cranked up with maximum settings and it looks simply stunning. It feels like you're entirely in a Star Wars game, the sounds are fantastic, sounding film accurate or even more so in a good set of stereo headphones. However, 
one little niggle, someone needs to have a word within the booth. Gardeners, street cleaners and animal keepers. There are so many swirling clouds of leaves in the wind. It's like American beauty on steroids, just with no plastic bags. To the extent, the beauty of the leaves and the effects becomes almost visual clutter. Whenever you spawn, for example, it appears that the game decides to make clouds of birds flutter out of the ground and spawn next to you. This does make target identification sometimes a challenge when you're running through streets looking around corners in a very fast-paced game. Turning down the graphics, of course, will probably sort this, and I'll definitely have a play with the options to see what I can do. I'm not criticising the game for looking stunning. I find myself at one stage just looking at the paintings on the walls in the Naboo Palace and marvelling at how Star Wars and true to the films the whole experience feels. It's a small niggle if there's too much detail that gets in the way of gameplay, and I'm sure that this is something that could perhaps be tweaked, and from looking at forums, I'm not the only person to think this. Speaking of game objectives, UI and flow, in general it felt pretty good. Even though I jumped in immediately, I could see on screen very obviously with indicators what I needed to be doing. Whether my teammates would take any notice of that, of course, was a different thing, but this is a brand new beta, people are new to the game, and I'm sure this will get refined as people start communicating with each other more and playing in groups of friends and pre-made squads. You can absolutely jump into Battlefront as a single solo key player and have a whole bunch of fun and team up with people, but I have a feeling there's an extra dimension that will really be enjoyable if you play with some friends or play as a preformed squad with some comms. One thing I did notice and had a few thoughts on were the heroes. Now, of course, you want to play as one of these iconic Star Wars characters, and they cost 5,000 battle points. You get battle points for contributing to fights, kills, in some cases taking damage, playing objectives, and other such things. Now, if you decide to buy into a lower class of hero upgraded unit for less battle points, you can get the super battle droid on one side example for about 2,000. The more kills you get with these, you can earn back battle points that you've already spent. So the better you play with these lower tiers of heroes, you can get points back and earn more points on top, so get the benefit of the hero and not have to start saving entirely all over again. If you have 2,000 points and want to buy a super battle droid, you can try and earn that back in a bit more and still be going for your Darth Maul for example. There was one piece of behaviour that felt a little bit funny to me. Now, obviously you're spending a reasonable amount of time fighting to try and gain the battle points to try and play as the top tier of hero. The really, really exciting ones, the Jedi, Boba Fett and that kind of thing. However, in this beta you can only have one of each unique hero on the battlefield at a time, so one Rey and one Han Solo, and at the moment there is competition for those slots. So even if you have 5,000 battle points, you can't always go and play as that hero if another person has already bought it and is using it. At the moment in the beta, this leads to a behaviour of someone who gets one of those heroes playing very, very cautiously so they don't die, because if they don't die then they lose control of the hero and probably won't be able to re-earn the battle points required to play it again in that game. Occasionally so far in the beta I've seen Darth Maul's running in, throwing a lightsaber and running out in a very very cautious way, Han Solo, well maybe more appropriate for a smuggler, hiding behind corners a lot and rolling away, and Rey tiptoeing around corners too. So this kind of defensive, save the hero I have, I don't want to die and lose it behaviour, hopefully is going to be addressed in the actual game, either through tweaking battle point thresholds, or maybe, I don't know, there are just simply more different heroes to play. It's definitely a balanced thing, playing as one of these heroes at 5,000 battle points is so fun, uh, they can really turn the outcome of a battle, they are strongly powered to feel more powerful than your standard units as well, so you couldn't have too many of them on either side, and I know there's definitely a balance issue there. Again, it's a minor niggle, I'm sure it's something that has either been dealt with in the first battlefront, I didn't play that one of course as I've said, or it's something that DICE can very very easily tweak. But the heroes are so fun, they feel so so great to play, and you feel so Star Wars when you're running around doing little shoulder charges as Han Solo, doing a force choke as Darth Maul, and running around with quite a lot of grace as Rey. Now one of the things levelled as a criticism at the first reboot of Battlefront was a lack of content or levels. Galactic Assault has 11 levels in the full game, so it's going to be a lot of fun straight out of the gate. Next up we have Space Combat, Starfighter Assault. Now this can be up to 24 players in Starfighter Assault. You race as the Rebel Alliance to destroy a Star Destroyer over Fondor, or rally as the Galactic Empire to defend the shipyard. Again, you have hero units you can buy into, like Poe Dameron's X-Wing, or Slave One, Boba Fett ship. My thoughts on this mode, well, it was loads of fun. Like Elite Dangerous when I first started playing it, I took a little bit of getting used to the controls and movement. There was a little motion sickness feel until I got used to it, but this is very personal to me. Rolling with the strafe keys and the default whilst pitching all around is pretty, pretty fun. The aiming system feels good and fair, you can 
dodge, duck, dip, dive and dodge if that's your game and it's arcadey to the point of you being able to pull things off with the more dedicated flight enthusiasts being able to throw themselves around a little bit. The fox, get this guy off me, loop the loop or Immelman turn of Lilac Wars 64 that I remember, this is not. You can have some pretty fun dogfights. Throwing crazy evasive manoeuvres against enemy players can get you disorientated rather quickly. And with my usual levels of coordination and skill, there was more than the odd crash into ships flying around until I got a bit used to things and how they were located. Now, I've yet to try map this to a joystick or a flight stick. I'll dig out my Thrustmaster Hotas and have a go later this week. Battlefront Rebooted had a few challenges pending on stick configuration, so I'll report back on that one. But the controls with mouse and keyboard are great right out of the box, and I'm sure it'll feel brilliant on console. Next up I tried Strike Mode, which is in the beta. You join a team of First Order Troopers or Resistance Fighters in team battles around Maz's castle, which was featured in The Force Awakens. You need to try and grab a package and extract it if you're the First Order, and if you're the Resistance you've got to try and stop them. Now heroes in this sense are replaced by upgraded troopers in this smaller map and smaller mode. You get a rocket and a flame trooper, for example, for the First Order. Maybe it was the luck of the draw I had on this mode, but my thoughts were that it could do with a little bit of tweaking, but perhaps it was the bedding in factor of the beta. Now I've had, in past work, before YouTube became any kind of thing for me, had the honour of going to E3 and playing games and seeing new games on the show floor there. The feel of this mode reminded me of that, when you put a bunch of people, some of whom may have never played the game before, together in a big multiplayer game, and expect them to all try and play the objective. I had a game of Battlefield Hardline at E3 several years ago, when no one knew what they were doing, and only about five people were trying to play the objective. This all makes sense as a game mode, but if people aren't guarding the package carrier, it very quickly degenerates into a running around flanking deathmatching fest. This game took quite a long time compared to the others, about 20 minutes or so, even on this much smaller map area. Of course, this is a very team-based and squad-based coordinated mode. With voice comms, this will very quickly become an entirely different and more organised experience. Finally, you can jump into some arcade modes that let you try out the various heroes and different classes in some player versus computer scenarios. Before rounding off my general impressions of the beta, it's worth talking about the various systems within it. You do have some upgrade systems in there. Firstly, you've got star cards. Now, these can help you play the game in slightly different ways. Think of them kind of like perks from the Call of Duty series. They can give you reduced cooldowns while meleeing. They can help you very slowly gain additional battle points while taking damage as a heavy class and similar. Different weapons are also available that can be crafted, as well as weapon modifications, the things like enhanced sights, and a lot more. On Naboo, on the 20 vs 20 Galactic Assault mode, I found one card, the officer's ability to prevent explosives detonating in an area, really useful in tight palace areas, where people throw grenades like it's no tomorrow in various choke points. I need to experiment a little bit more. This perk and upgrade system seems to give a reasonable chance to play your own way and customise without getting too fiddly and micromanagey. I love a good stat sheet, but I'm happy to play that in an RPG. Divinity Original Sin, by the way, is really good for that if you like tinkering. More on that in another video, I think. Now, the challenge with all of this stuff is that it's locked within a credits, loot box and parts system. You can earn credits by doing various quest type missions and winning games. The credits unlock boxes that you can buy that have different items to also upgrade your starships and the actual heroes as well as all of the things I've mentioned within them. And some boxes will give you parts and parts can be used to craft cards as well as upgrade your cards through different levels to give more benefit. Now I'm sure you'll be able to buy these crates. The DLC itself for this game actually by the way is free so this unlocks the whole debate of microtransactions. I need to get a little bit more playtime in to get a sense on the power of these items before getting into all that. EA have said that if you want to buy crates yourself with money then you'll just be accelerating things. We'll have to see how much in the actual game the acceleration of progress is and how powerful these items are against you earning them in a free to play sense. So after all that, what's my general impression of the beta? Well, if you're not a Star Wars fan, this is still a whole heap of fun if you like an action type battley shootery game. It's beautiful looking, it sounds amazing. The game's pretty tuned with the battlefield systems at its core. You can jump in with friends, play, or you can jump in solo and have a bunch of fun. And if you are a Star Wars or a sci-fi fan, this is, like the first Battlefront looked to be, heavenly immersion indeed. From the orchestral strains of that familiar music to the visual detail on the levels and the sound as you draw your lightsaber as Rail Darth Maul. I'm in Star Wars Heaven, and I'm sure if you have any kind of love for the series, then you will be too. Now, the test for me in a general sense on launch will be whether or not this is a sorbet or a comfort blanket game. In the sorbet sense, I mean it's kind of tasty, it's good to clean your palate in between playing other games, it's relaxing, it's fun, but it's not a whole meal in itself. 
or whether it's a blanket game, whether it's a comfy, fun game that I'll come back to from time to time after I've played it a whole bunch, but it's not a one that I'm going to be playing every single week. Now, I, by nature, am quite a competitive player of games, and the element of competition and making myself advance will bring me back to a multiplayer title. EA and DICE seem to have taken a big step on from the first Battlefront, with the increased amounts of multiplayer content in terms of levels that's going to be available, and the single player mode that, because I love Star Wars Story, I will definitely play through at least once. So, I'm pretty optimistic that I'm going to enjoy this game, it's just a question of how much I enjoy it and how long I come back to it for when it actually releases. If your curiosity is piqued and you'd like to try this, well, the beta is open for Star Wars Battlefront 2 from October the 6th onwards on PC, Xbox One, and PS4. It's around about 20 gigabytes on PC, uh, going down to about 12 or 14, I think, on one of the consoles. So it's a pretty hefty download. So be sure to factor that into your downloading and playtime accordingly. I've really enjoyed my time in it so far. I'll definitely be playing it over the next few days, and I will definitely be picking this game up in November. Come on, EA and DICE, I'm really hyped up now. In a galaxy far, far away, please don't let my expectations down. There you go, that is the first episode of Unwrapped. If you have a better name for this first impression series, whether it be early access games, beta games, or brand new games that have released that I've just played the first five to 10 hours of, then please do let me know in the comments. What did you think of this episode? Are there bits you'd cut out? Did you like it all? What did you like? What did you not? Please do let me know all of your thoughts in the comments, as well as you think if these videos belong on this channel, or if I should start a new channel for this kind of content. I'd love to hear any and all of your thoughts and constructive criticism in the comments below. It will help me make better videos for you. Thanks so much for tuning in. A big shout to my patrons on Patreon who make this kind of video possible. I would not be able to make it without them. If you'd like to see how you could support the channel from perhaps just a dollar, a pound or euro a month, go to patreon.com forward slash hammy, which is linked on the channel and in the description below. All of my regular Overwatch content, news, lore, interactions, voice lines and much more is in the playlists here too. Cheers for tuning in. I've been Hammy and the Force will be with you always.